Well, we are live today with Tiffany Thomas, and I'm so excited. Thank you so much for joining the chat with TK. I'm going to give people um, just a little time to share, like, and love, share, like, and love. Um, when we come on, we are coming in right into the conversation. I am your host, TK Carter, and we're on another segment of the chat with TK. And for those of you who know me, you know that um, when we get on live, it's, it's on and popping. We are excited today about what we're going to talk about. So as you are coming in, I want you to like, love, and share. Share if you like it. Like if you love it. Love it if you like it. Go ahead and do all of that because <laughs> we are here. It's a Sunday evening, and it's right before um, our, our good show, Sunday Best. So we're going to get on so we can all get off so we can. Yes, yeah. because next time. <laughs> Sunday bed. <laughs> and then, hey, yeah, we can go to bed. Yeah, y'all know. After you hit a certain age bracket, it's time to get into bed after, after a certain show. It's just time to go to bed. So anyway, we're excited today. It's Sunday, S-O-N-D-A-Y, mm -hmm. and you are on again with your girl, TK. I am so excited to welcome to the platform today, Tiffany Thomas. Woo! I am I'm happy okay, about yeah. Today's topic, I'm excited about it. Um, I, the reason why I want you to share this particular broadcast is because we are talking about 40 acres and a mural. I know y'all are like, what in the world is talk about today? Yes, I want my 40 acres and a mule. Who wants 40 acres and a mule? I want to see you in the comments. I want to see where you're coming from. Um, I want to know if you want your 40 acres in the mule. I want to take this time right now. I'm getting ready to um, go ahead and share this. And when we come on, we um, when we're sharing it, you get an opportunity to share it too, Tiffany. Um, we got yeah. we come on and we share it as a, um, we need to make sure we check our privacy settings because it um, usually comes in um, just sharing to our friends. So we want to make sure that we are public so everyone can see what we have going on today. So. We are on right now. So invite your friends, invite your neighbors. Uh, we're talking about 40 acres and a mule. And the reason why that is our topic today, very creatively, is because today we are going to share in um, this conversation with Tiffany Thomas, who is a licensed real estate agent and has been doing real estate for some time and also a veteran of the United States um military i'm not sure I, is it the army the navy the navy the navy, navy. The, navy. <laughs> the navy girl you know my father was uh, the of the united states army and i so I, I i have a propensity to say army but um you know army rocks but okay. navy i mean this is amazing uh a veteran of the the united states navy and uh are and she's going to tell us a little bit more about that because i don't want to mess that part of it up but i want to welcome now to uh the chat with tk tiffany thomas all the way from Virginia. So she's been yeah. ready to take this away. So please introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us who okay. you are and tell us today why we're going to be talking about 40 acres and a mule. Awesome. Well, first off, thank you so much, TK, for having me be with you today. I'm so honored. This is such a joy. Um, but I'm Tiffany Thomas, and I'm a little country girl. From Mississippi, um, and the <laughs> Navy brought me to Virginia, and so I did ten years in the Navy. Right. I was active duty for ten years, and I transitioned out of the Navy in 2018. But prior to me transitioning out, I knew I wanted to have a career that I was kind of like free, could set my own hours. I was taking orders for ten years, and I said I don't want to take orders from nobody else ever again like that. So wow. I got out and um, sorry, I got my real estate license prior to getting out. And it's been such a blessing um, to be able to help be a blessing to others. And then I got out and I started dibbling, dabbling in so many other things. And a lot of people know me as a branding ambassador. I, I started just, you know, trying to help ministries and organizations with their graphics and helping their brands. And God said, I need you to focus on this right now. I need you to settle down. There are people, clients who need to be educated and helping them get into um, their own home or get into real estate investment. And then now I'm tapping into the instructor piece where I'm actually trying to help people if you want a second career 
or if you're looking to just get into real estate so you can build your own portfolio. So now I'm on the instructor piece trying to help people from ground zero. And this is where I'm at right now. God is truly, truly, truly been blessed. I'm so excited about this season of my life right now. Yes, and you bring up a very important um, part of the conversation. Um, there's a mm -hmm. lot of things that we want to do, um, but there's some seasons where what we really want to do and what we're good at is not necessarily what we should be doing. So um, the fact that you have um, segued this part of the season of your life into dedicating it solely to real estate and real estate instructing, um, I want us to jump into the conversation of why uh, owning real estate um, is important and you know really is there a certain age bracket when do you start uh, looking into real estate what is uh, the importance of really really owning and uh, an investment in what we know as a piece of the earth the Bible speaks of the meek inheriting yeah. the earth and yeah. I definitely equate that directly to real estate so Let's talk about in a spiritual sense, as well as in the natural, why it okay. is so important to uh, really take ownership seriously. Um, I believe taking ownership serious, a lot of people want to see a, a instant uh, return when it comes to real estate. They want to get it, flip it, and get that instant return. But I think ownership is about what happens long term with it getting into real estate, the longer you're involved in real estate, the longer you're on a property, the more equity you have in that property. And it may not be just for you. It may be the seed that you sow into the next generation and things of that nature. Real estate appreciates. Real estate is not like wow. buying a car, where if you buy a car and it depreciates as soon as you drive off the lot, mm -hmm. it's not worth what you pay for it. Real estate is just the opposite. Real estate appreciates over time. And as it appreciates, you're yes, you're paying, you know, your mortgage or what not and that investment into it. But 10, 20, 30 years down the road, 50 years down the road, that property is gonna, probably going to be worth probably two or three times more than what you originally paid for it back wow. in 1960, 1970. Our ancestors who own properties now, those houses that are still standing, that are still structurally sound. You would be amazed at the value in those houses. And that alone, just having that ownership, having something that your family can have, whether you decide to liquidate it down the road and, you know, maybe divide the funds up between the family, whatever. But that is a seed that is sown for generations to come. So um, let's talk about those who feel like they cannot afford real estate or they can't you know it's a it's a time where you know it's more comfortable to perhaps rent an apartment as opposed to invest in a piece of property believe it or not you can get a mortgage less than you pay for rent and a lot of say people do not time. believe say it say you, you can get a mortgage. you can get a mortgage and it'll be less than you will pay for rent and the wow. crazy thing about that is when you're renting an apartment, you're re renting a house or wherever you're renting, you don't get anything back from that. You're just pretty much saying, I'm paying for the amount of time that I'm here. When I leave, I get nothing back. They don't even want to hardly give you your security deposit back when you're renting nowadays. They're going to find something to keep that. But when you own a house and you're paying a monthly mortgage, that is going into equity and that's going into equity and equity. I'm telling you, most people, most of my clients um, here that I deal with, they go and they save three or four hundred dollars on their mortgage by what they were paying in the rent for renting an apartment that's half the size of the house that they're buying. Wow. And they're amazed when they're able to find that out. They're like, how is this possible? But technically, when you're renting, you're paying somebody's mortgage. It's just not yours. So if you're renting Ooh. from an apartment building, you're paying their mortgage because half the time they don't write out on these apartment buildings. They have loans on these. They have mortgages. You're paying their mortgage. If you're renting somebody else's house, they probably have a mortgage on it. You're paying their mortgage and you get nothing for it. Nothing. Wow. That is very, that's a very important point that you bring up, Tiffany, that 
um, we're paying mortgage. If we are renting, we're paying a mortgage. It's just a not mortgage. our mortgage. And Absolutely. the fact that we are paying somebody's mortgage means that we can be paying our mortgage. And Absolutely. so what is the primary fear factor that you um, have encountered with clients who perhaps maybe did not want to purchase a home, but after started working, starting uh, work with you, they kind of give you a fear factor of, you know, hey, I didn't even want to go through this process. What is right. one of the number one fear factors of owning property? Um, I think the main thing is they don't think they'll qualify. Believe it or not, the credit um, piece is one of the things that um, steer a lot of people away. They think that yeah. I'm not there yet. Um, they think that they got to have another thing where they have to have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars um, saved up in a bank. That's not always the case. Um, so I think those two things are the things that um, credit being definitely the number one piece um, that they can't. You know, I have people call me all the time and they it's like when they talk to me and they're asking me, and they're like, oh, I have a 650 credit score. I'm trying to work because I want to buy a house one day. And I'm like, well, stop you from buying now. It's just a matter of a conversation. But because of that fear of rejection and not wanting to try, you know, and they don't want anybody to tell them no. But people will be amazed at what they qualify for, that they can do move forth now. They'll be amazed that there are so many um, different types of loans where you have zero down. There is some grants that's out there for first time home buyers. There are, there's closing cost assistance that you can acquire from the sellers. There's so many different things where you don't have to come and say, I got ten, fifteen thousand dollars in a bank because that's not realistic at all. Okay. So we have ways around that. But those I think are the two main things that are most concerned, especially in our community, for sure. Yes. So in the African African American community, credit it, you just mentioned credit is a mm -hmm. primary factor. Let's talk about credit and and help okay. us get to a place where if our credit is not so great, what okay. are some things we can start doing right now? Because um, I know that most of us we we hear you know we, we are we are church people by nature, so we hear yes. a lot of times you know name it claim it. Um, put your hands on it and you got it. And then yeah. we'll go, <laughs> we go to <laughs> Tiffany Thomas, the realtor and Tiffany Thomas, the realtor says, realistically, um, your credit is not good enough. These are the things you need to stop right mm -hmm. now and do. Tell us what some of those things are so that perhaps maybe we can start getting ourselves in motion now mm -hmm. so that yeah. we can be prepared to purchase a home. And the name it, claim it can actually become manifested. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm with the name it and claim it. But we also have to remember, faith without work is dead. So there's some work that we have to do that is going to have to get us to that point. We can name it and sure. claim all that, but we have to do our part. And that's where, like you said, we have to come in. Um, a couple pointers, I would say, would be the first thing is that a lot of people mess up. You know, they tell you to get credit cards to build your credit and that's okay if you can manage your credit card sure. the appropriate way which is you know you have your credit card and say you get gas and you know you have the money in your pocket but if you swipe that card to get gas and you pay that off um every month that's great you want to keep your credit cards less than 30 percent um you don't want to have a credit card balance yeah, you we, need all in, we need to get that in the com um in the comments um if i see craig mm -hmm. nelson here how you how are you craig um, Craig is here. Craig, will you please type this one main point in there for me, please? Um, he says you have his vote. So you're the real deal. So we're listening Thank to you. you. <laughs> uh, Craig, I need you to type for me. The first thing you said was you need to have your credit usage. Your credit, credit card, card credit usage. usage. Less than 30%. 30 or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I talk to one of my lenders that I, you know, um, she's really really good and she also tells me when it comes to credit card we have a habit of going into stores and you know we want to say that 20 percent on that dress if we go to new york and company and they say you, you get a store card if you go to macy's you can get a store card and save 25 percent that is frowned upon upon mortgage lenders 
my lender told me that is frowned upon because that's an impulse buy. So that's saying that, are you really using your finances appropriately? Are you really thinking about your purchases? Are you responsible? So if you have a Victoria's Secret credit card, a Macy's credit card, and a, a, a New York and Company credit card, they're all almost 70, 80%, if not maxed out, then those are going to hinder you because they're looking at that. That's, so that's not good. A lot of people, um, I had somebody tell me they were going to get a finger hut card to establish credit. Those kind of things um, are impulse decisions. Mortgage oh. lenders think beyond the surface. They're looking at the types of credit. All credit is not good credit. So they're looking at those things to ensure that you're, um, how you think. Mortgage lenders are, I will tell you now, one of the hardest loans to get. It's not like going buying a car. Well, I got approved for a car, so I should be able to get approved for a house. It's totally different process. They look at things totally different. Oh, excuse me. So I would definitely recommend, you know, those um, points in regards to your credit. Um, if you have collections, um, you can print out your credit report. Um, you can get it free every year. Um, if you go to annualcreditreport.com, get your credit report free every year. And even if you Please want to score put that in the comments for me, um, thank you, Sean Cook. Keep credit card usage under 30%. Um, thank get you. annual. What is that? What is the annual website? Credit, annual credit report.com. You can get your credit report free every year and you'll see all of your accounts that you have. You'll see the standing. It does not give you your credit score, but if you go to, I want to say scorecard.com, that is a website by Discover, and you're able to get your um, free credit score, um, and it'll let you know where that credit score is. So you want to see, okay, now these are all your accounts, what you have in collections. I recommend, if you wherever you're located, if you know somebody that's in a mortgage industry, um, take that report. Don't have them pull your credit. Take what you wow. print out and ask them to look at those collection items. Some items will need to be paid off. Some items may be old and small, and when you start touching them, it brings them back to life, if that makes sense. Some stuff yes. is not reporting to your credit anymore. But if you go and say, okay, I'm gonna start paying off on that, now you bring it back to life, now it's back reporting, and now it can hurt you more than wow. it can help you until you get it paid off. So my recommendation would be, Get your free credit report, get your free score, and talk to a loan officer and say, hey, this is what I have. What do I need to do? If you don't know anybody, y'all can reach out to me, email me. Um, I have tons of lenders that I have here locally, and they don't mind looking and telling you, like, we're all on the same page. We want to make sure you get there. So if you just say, hey, can you connect me with a lender? I can connect you with a lender, and you can talk directly to them and ask them, how can I get to a position where I'm ready to purchase a home? And I'm gonna be honest with you, that's the best way to do it. Because a lender, what I would see, um, is gonna be different from what they see. They know exactly what you need to do, what you need to touch, and how you need to do it. And they'll give you a game plan because their goal is for you to purchase a home as well. But don't have them pull your credit if you don't think you're there yet. Because when they pull it, that's a hard pull. So you a don't want them to pull credit. Yeah, so you don't want them to pull your credit. So that will be my recommendation because you may not have to pay off some collection. They may tell you not to touch that right now. Right. Leave that alone. Pay these things off. So that will be my biggest recommendation. And if you don't know where to start there, they can always reach out to me and I can help you with that. Well, I really love how you bring that in. Um, when I was um, in Colorado, I actually had a real estate license, active real estate license. I absolutely love the real estate industry. I love the real estate world. Um, mm -hmm. And you are absolutely correct. At this point in time, um, when we are trying to purchase property, you, you so eloquently stated, get that annual credit report. Do not pull your credit, but get that annual credit report so you can see where you are. Um, Bruce, Thank you so much for bringing that to the conversation to pay your bills on time. And listen, even if you're sending $5, they will not send it back to you. If you're sending something to your creditors that you owe, the fact that you show good trust in good yes. faith 
that yes. you can pay your bills. They are absolutely excited to help you get back on track. So don't uh, deny the credit call um, when they're calling. Don't swipe Please them to don't. the left. Stop ignoring them. Please don't. Go ahead and take the call and say, listen, uh, and do you agree with me? Take the call. I answer Please. all the calls. I answer all 1-800 Whether you want to numbers. talk to them or not, know. please. <laughs> Listen, you below the line this, look, I put all of my bills up above the line and you below the line this month, I'm not going to be able to pay. You got to communicate with these lenders. Absolutely. And if you if you owe them, you pay them. Even if, like I said, if you can say, listen, I can send you $3, they're going to tell you, well, man, we need $300. You, when you send that $3, watch them put that $3 to that to that balance. They're not going to send it back. Definitely. $100. Take the call. They're all gonna you got to do all is of it. <laughs> take the call. So, Tiffany, talk but, to us about that. Take the call. Take the call. Take the call. And let me tell you, even when you talk to them, you will be amazed. And I'm, I'm a witness to this. This is firsthand information. If you say you have a balance, it's a collection, and you can't pay it all. If you answer that call and talk to them and say, hey, I have a $2,000 balance. Can you work with me? If they work with you, you can ask them if they will take a pay and delete letter. What that means, if I have a $2,000 balance and you agree that you'll take $1,000, okay, if I pay $1,000, will you delete this from my report? Wow. Where no, is no history. It's called a pay and delete letter. Please oh, Google somebody, it. Please type that pay and delete letter. Pay and delete letter. I have done it. And what it is, they say they take my promise to pay. Now you gotta pay it now. You can't tell people you're gonna pay and you don't pay. <laughs> you gotta pay them. Gotta pay, we, you gotta pay. So if you tell them, okay, I, I have five hundred dollars. If I agree to pay five hundred dollars, will you delete this from my credit report? And if they say yes. There's a pay and delete letter. You send them that pay and delete letter and with your payment. But they make sure you get in writing that they agree. Ask them to email you. Ask them to send you a letter. Whatever they have to do. Because you want to make sure when you pay that $500, it will be removed from your credit report. And it will wow. never exist. It will never exist. And I've done it. So I know it works. I've had wow. two accounts that I've done that way. Wow, this is crazy. Um, and y'all talk about 40 acres and a mule. This is how you get your 40 acres. Everybody want their reparation. You got to pay your bills, right? So um, you, <laughs> yeah. may not, you may not be able to get your 40 acres and a mule the way we think somebody going to give you your 40 acres and a mule. But let me tell you, we got to take control as African-Americans, as you know, in our community. We have mm -hmm. to take control because guess what? The earth belongs to us. The homes belong to us. The land belongs um, to us. Yes. Um, we're talking now, for those of you who are joining in, we are talking to Tiffany Thomas, who is a mm -hmm. licensed real estate agent as well as a real estate instructor. She's given us a, a few tips, and our topic today is creatively called um, a 40 Acres and a Mule. But yes. what we're really talking about is really how to get ourselves in position to mm -hmm. inherit the earth. So what mm -hmm. we want to do, um, thank you, Craig. Uh, he said that, uh, he he's uh, tried uh, with full payment over the phone. Um, he's tried it, even though they told him no, uh, even with the full payment that day. But what we're going to do, this is we're trying to get you to get some help. And I want to ask you, Tiffany, listen, yes. I use uh, creditcarma.com. I use mm -hmm. that as a resource for myself. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I'm, and I'm asking you as the expert here on the panel, um, I just want to ask you about that because I use creditkarma.com just to kind of keep me in the loop of, the, you know, how it's reporting, what mm -hmm. it's reporting to. I'm not really sure that the updated credit score is what they're really looking for, but it kind of helps me stay in a lane per se of where I am with my credit. And I like that because it helps, it pushes me as a challenge because if I see it go up three points and then the next week okay. I see it go down mm -hmm. seven points, it's like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, what happened? What do I need to do? You know, like, who do I right. need to pay? It kind of gives me a challenge. But I want to ask you as the expert, what what are your feelings um, about that? Credit Karma is good to kind of gauge. But I would when you're looking at your score, we have found sometimes with Credit Karma, your score is about 20, 30, 40 points off. And that can be, it can be too low or it can be too high. Okay. Um, unfortunately, 
most of the time it comes through and the lender looks at it is too high. Um, so it's good to kind of gauge the activity that's going on. So I use Credit Karma too, but I'm looking at the activity. You know, if anything shows up, if I'm getting any alerts, um, and wow. credit uses that new accounts opening up, did I do it? I do use it for those purposes, but when it comes to monitoring your score, I don't recommend it. Um, if you have um, an account with like your local credit union, I don't know, like with Navy Federal, you can get it where you can see your monthly um, credit report, which is a credit score, a little bit every month. You can see that every month they update it for you. It's a little bit better and closer to what the lender is looking for, Vice's Credit Karma. And I, I say that because people get discouraged because they come to me and Credit Karma may say you're a 650 or a 700. And then if you talk to the lender and then the lender says, oh, you're like a 600 or 620, they get, it kind of deflates them. So I kind of try to put that up front. That way you kind of expect, sometimes Credit Karma might be close, but it's very rare. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's very rare. And I like to, I'm the type of person, I'm a realist. So I don't want you to be disappointed because if you get discouraged at the beginning of the process, it affects everything. Um, sure. So I kind of want to set you up to be prepared for those who are looking to possibly purchase and that's what they're gauging it off of. I don't want them to gauge off that score too much. Yeah. And I do, and I still want to kind of go back. I want to go back and address Craig. Um, because uh, Sean actually responds by saying that some lenders, um, depending on how motivated they are to take a payment, when you're trying to pay these lenders off, it really does depend mm -hmm. sometimes on the company. It depends on mm -hmm. the the um, the time, how how long or how old uh, mm -hmm. that credit card payment you know that you're trying to pay off. It depends on the timing things of that nature. And sometimes, let me just be very clear, it depends on the representative you get on the phone. Sometimes you just got to get yes. the right. This is the person sometimes. The person. The person. <laughs> the quota and they're like, no, I need all your payment right now today. And you telling them, listen, I, I can settle with you. It just sometimes depends on who you can get on the phone to work with you. Absolutely. So uh, Craig, I want to encourage you. Don't be discouraged. That's why we're having this conversation. Thank you, Sean, for chiming in. Um, on that because all of us I think every last one of us listen I'm just gonna be very transparent when I first went to college let me tell you they had these tables out and they had lights and balloons and t-shirts yes. and credit cards and listen my parents we were not broke growing up we were not poor growing up I mm -hmm. watched my father pay bills but one thing about it I didn't have an idea I didn't have a clue of what credit cards were i didn't have a clue of credit yes. cards and so i got these credit cards because they gave me a t-shirt in exchange for a thousand dollar credit line and i was so excited to have this credit card and i'm swiping all over the city um balling out of control and yes they were yes. giving out credit cards like they were giving out candy and to a 18 19 year old in college and they're telling you just go use this credit card and it 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 was so flashy and it was so exciting I didn't know I had to pay the people back. Uh, so, you know, now you're talking they, about. They, they don't give you that no more. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I owe you money back. This is the type of um, attitude we have to have. You've got to pay them back. It's borrowed money, borrowed funds, which should only be used at the discretion of emergencies only. Meaning that yeah. if you are, um, if you have credit cards right now, we got to get them to a place where we can get them down. Now, I know that there are um, some instruction when it comes to canceling credit cards and keeping your oldest credit card line alive mm -hmm. and well at a zero balance and mm -hmm. um, how that plays on the debt to income ratio. Yes. Uh, you have this extended amount of credit open and yep. out. But today's conversation uh, kind of puts us in a situation where We've got to stay on track with the payment of our bills so that mm -hmm. when it's time to purchase property and get this property, uh, we're able to to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to piggyback, go back when you said when you were in college, you earlier, you said how old the earlier you can start educating our youth on home buying financial literacy, the earlier those conversations happen, the more 
of our community that will be able to go ahead and we these mistakes that we learned <laughs> the hard way, they the hard way. Front. I was talking to my guy brother, he's 19 years old and he's talking about he's buying his first property next year. Those are the things that you want to make sure that are you, but we don't talk about those things. And so they sure. go off the colleges and they get those credit cards or they're getting the extra money from their student loans on their refund check. And they, nobody's telling you, you got to pay those back too. And I have a lot of clients with fifty, sixty thousand dollars in student loans that they're currently paying. They're no longer deferred now. They're no longer in forbearance. Wow. So they're counting against you now. That hurts you. That counts against your debt to income. So, but nobody told us about those refund checks when we were balling out, you know, at the beginning of the semester oh, for my so refund check. <laughs> and you're getting five or six thousand dollars back from the staff alone. You got to pay that when you get grown. That's true. And true. It's on all that is on your credit report. So, the earlier you start talking to the teens and, you know, even your preteens, getting them used to credit and, you know, getting them um where they if you give them their first credit card talk to them about how to use it this is why you use it this will happen when you use it inappropriately be transparent with them because that will prevent so much um down the road of having to fix anything or get in a position because if they come if they start out the gate right they're going to start out with six 50 and higher credit scores, 700 credit scores. Right, so when they're right. actually entering the job market and they have income now, their credit score is already where it needs to be. They got the job, so they won't have to go and rent for somebody for two or three years. They can come out, they got this great job, they got this great income, they've been building their credit score because they've been doing it smart from the gate, and now right. they're ready to purchase a house. As soon as they, you know, they got their great job, now let's go buy a house. That's how it's supposed to be. Absolutely. And That's I love that. I love how you bring that to the conversation. I, I do want to um, put a caveat here. Um, what we need to understand about student loan refunds is that it's not a refund at all. Uh, anything that you get back on a loan, a loan, <laughs> a L-O-A-N, anything you get back on a loan is not a refund. That is what we call residual funding. It is residual income that comes from a loan because mm -hmm. it can't be a refund if you have to pay it back. You've exactly. got to pay it back. It's not a refund. It's residual income that comes from the excess amount yeah. over and above that uh, of a payment that needs to be paid on a loan that has been given to you. So let's let's be very clear that it's residual funding as opposed yes. to a refund. It's the wrong R word. It's not refund, it's residual. <laughs> so right. we gotta keep the R word in perspective because so many of us, I, I need everybody to hear me. A lot of us are living off of financial aid refunds, student loan refunds. I have a, uh, Sean Cook is on here now and, and he served as a business office manager um, for Strayer University. We've seen um, the calamity of student loan what we have been taught as refunds we didn't come we didn't came up we popping collars and uh getting new rims <laughs> and all this stuff you know gucci purses on a refund that's residual funding it's as if you know anything that you're getting back from that loan is as if you've gone to the bank and said i need to borrow that amount of money Absolutely. and so it's in excess of the loan mm -hmm. and that makes it residual so i don't i don't want to keep beating that but i need to, everybody to understand we that's are good in a situation where we've not been taught that you're right. not supposed to live off that in fact the student loan refund should be going into a separate account so that when you come out of school you have that money to pay back on the loan um that you have out or you take direct costs and this is not a student loan um class, but, uh, because it's you didn't put in financial aid uh because you have uh, this money come you can take direct costs and only pay for the amount of courses so that it actually lowers the amount of a student loan debt which actually helps your debt to income ratio down the road so as we're talking to Tiffany Thomas uh, we're getting ready to wrap this up but I've, I've certainly enjoyed the information and I see that people definitely um, have enjoyed it and they're saying yeah. you know, they're agreeing with everything that we're talking about um, and, and I see Daphne says that we plan to have a career where we could pay the student loans back 
But it's absolutely right, Daphne. That day is so gone. I mean, most of us who have student loans, I can first, I'm going to raise my hand as the first witness to say, first and foremost, I'm not even working in the field that I got my degree in. I was going to, I was about to say, <laughs> most of the people that have the student loans and got these degrees, they're doing something totally different. Totally different. Totally different. So that's another thing to, which goes, I think, back to early on. Um, and this is a whole other topic for another day. But everybody, college doesn't have to be the way to go. We got trade schools, military, all this different stuff. But that goes, that's like I said, another topic for another day. But if we're properly taught or educated up front, you know, we just feel like go to college because that's the thing because so many of our ancestors could not. But we have so many different options now. And I think those are conversations that we because if we can't do it, we want to make sure our children are able to do it. But there are other options. Do you really want to go to college? You know what? Go to the JUCO. Like you back home in Tennessee, you can go to a junior college in Tennessee for free and get your mind together. What you want to do? Let's talk about it in two years and revisit it. At least you oh, will be free. no debt. No debt when you get done. No debt. <laughs> no debt. No and, and give you time to grow, mature, and figure this thing out a little bit. But that's a whole nother conversation. Right. You get a chance to do four years of high school all over again and, and be really proud about it. You know, if you didn't really do that great. So and this is how <laughs> this is how we get to where we are right now with. Um, and I'm so proud of your accomplishment. I just want you to briefly mm -hmm. talk about your your new season of now uh, being a, a real estate instructor uh, instructor. And this is another option. Um, we're, we're talking about options. Real mm -hmm. estate is yet another option. Real estate is another option Absolutely. that you can go into because uh, a four-year institution may not be for everybody. I do not frown on anyone who says four-year college is not for me uh, because, again, I already knew I was going to college because my parents told me I was going to college. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know that I wasn't going to college. I didn't know that there was another option because you were going to work <laughs> college um but now so many um options have been extended to us you know a lot yeah. of these options i didn't even have so i'm, I'm not even right. i thank god that my parents forced us to to go get an education mm -hmm. because it's something that you cannot take away from me i have the paper i have the degree i've earned the right you to say that i have knowledge in an area and, and things of that nature whether i'm working into it working in it or not it still sets me apart from a lot of my peers who don't have mm -hmm. um, a degree right. and it still makes me that much more marketable marketable however this is an option the option of going into real estate the option of going into the real estate world and i i really want you to kind of touch base on that um going into real estate mm -hmm. and uh, and how you've now expanded your licensure to now being an instructor Okay, so going into real estate is actually much simpler than probably people think. Um, the course that I teach, or in most courses, um, you can go to real estate school. You can do it online. You have the online option um, where it's self-paced. Or you can go, um, I teach a correspondence course, and you're in class with me for about three weeks. And you're in class for three weeks, and then after you pass the test for that class, then you go take an exam called a PSI salesperson licensing exam and it has two parts it has a national part which is standard across the nation and then each state has a state portion because every state has its own law so sure. you'll take those two parts um, and then once you pass that licensing exam you will talk to a broker and you're a licensed real estate agent I was licensed in a month and a half so that's from the start of my school wow. till getting my license I passed thank God um, the test the first time up and in a month and a half with school and all, I was a licensed agent. And when I tell you, it's probably been one of the most lucrative careers um, that I can honestly think of. I have, last year, 2019, was my first full year where I wasn't active duty. Um, and me being transparent, I got out of Navy E6 with 10 years in. So I wasn't at the bottom of the total pole. Yeah. Um, but I increased my income that I was making as an E6 in the Navy by 30% um, last year doing wow. real estate. And I didn't work from October to December in real estate. I didn't sell a house. I took that off and was doing other um, activities and with family and stuff. So from October to December, I didn't sell a house. 
So 10 months of the year, and I still increase, by the grace of God, my income by 30%. Wow. So it's an amazing, amazing, amazing industry. And you can do it. A lot of people want to do it part-time. You can do it on your own time. So if you have your career that you do, your nine to five, um, you sure. can still do real estate in the evening, you know, on the weekends, set your appointments. The great thing about it is it's flexible. You can do real estate your way. It's like having your own business. You're working for yourself. And that's what I love about it. I don't want to be put in a box. I like being free, being able to help people, do it on my time, and still have time yes. to do whatever else I want to do. Yes. And that's the great thing about it. And you, like, progress. You know, you can become a broker, but nothing is strenuous about it. It's it's just honestly just a service. It's a service. I tell people all the time, I'm not a salesperson by any means. I don't call myself a salesperson. I just love to serve people. I just love to help. That's who I naturally am. So I apply that to everything I do. So I apply that to selling homes. I'm applying that to being an instructor and helping people, you know, if they're looking for a second career, if they're sure. looking for to transition into a career. Um, some people are, you know, stay at home, you know, they're like stay at home moms or dads and they're like they want something, you know, to help the household a little bit, but you know, this is something I can do. This is what it's about. It's life changing. It's people that have gotten into real estate and it's life changing. So that's where I am right now and I'm crazy excited. And even if you're not here in Virginia, you can't go to my school and you're somewhere else where you're preparing to take those national exams, I can still help you study for the national exam. So I'm going to be doing like an online study group. So for anybody who's preparing for the national exam, they'll be able to jump online and we'll study together, have different um, types of activities to try to help retain the knowledge wow. and information. Wow. Um, but that's just uh, what I'm going to be doing until God's going to do something else. So. <laughs> well, that's great. I, I'm so happy to hear that. And thank you so much for taking time to just share that with us. I'm absolutely. very proud of that. And yes, you are absolutely right. Real estate is very freeing. Um, you can do it on your own time, you, but you have to be committed to it now. You have to be committed. Have to be it's, a, it's a level of commitment. You've got to be committed. You have to stay committed uh, to real estate. Real estate is, um, you know, although lucrative, it actually does require that work. So as we come to a close, um, Tiffany Thomas, thank you so much for joining thank us for you. 40 Acres thank and a People. <laughs> This has been so great. And for those of you who want to get into real estate, I know that she will not mind uh, you reaching out to her um, in Virginia, as she's already stated. I mean, look, I know things have progressed because when I went to real estate school, I was in real estate school for six months. Um, oh, wow. To take care of, yes, I was there for six months. After graduating um, college, I went to real estate school. Um, I was there for six months. I received my license and then I had to sit for a, a board exam, which I did not pass the first time. Um, let me testify, Saints. I didn't pass it the second time. <laughs> testify. Three times. Three times. Three times. Um, and every state board is different. Every state board test is different. So I'm gonna tell you, I sat for that board. Uh, three times, but I did not give up. And but when I tell you, in the Holy Ghost, that's all right. Yes, yes, yes. Three times I promise you, I passed it on that third time, and I was so 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 excited. When they saw me come back, they were like, "Takeda, you gonna you gonna do it this time?" <laughs> that to me, I, I was about right. to go, but I did it. And I want you to know that you know you do need um, valuable partners in real estate. Um, you need to be connected to lenders. You got to know your Absolutely. business. You have to know mortgage. You have to know how to connect with people. It's not just something you get in, like you said, to make money. But this is something mm -hmm. that we use to build legend with. We use this to build um, our posterity with. So I yes, am so Lord. glad for those of you that have joined. Um, I usually come on at a later time, but I really appreciate those that have joined today. This was just, we talked yesterday and, and, and we were like, you got time tomorrow? Let's do it. So do this it. is the time we came <laughs> on. I'm so excited and thank you so much, Tiffany. Please tell us um, your email address, your, you know, your website. You have a beautiful website. Um, tell us how to get in touch with you. Uh, tell us, just give us your information. And then when we finish this uh, portion of the live, I want you to go back to this um, and put that in the comments so that we will have that uh, available. And for anybody who's thinking about real estate, or even on the side, it's a passion. You can do it on the side. 
If you're thinking about it, reach out to um, Tiffany, my sister, and come on, give us your information as to how to uh, reach out to you. Awesome. You can call me. Um, my number is area code 757-576-3265. Or you can email me at Tiffany T at ChantelRay.com. I'm gonna put that in the comments for you, but Tiffany T at ChantelRay.com, or you can go to my website, www.therealestatetip with two T's dot com, www.therealestatetip.com. Um, and visit my website and you can see everything that's there. Um, one more thing I want to plug in to keep the, um, because we were talking inheritance a little bit. Last thing I want to leave with everybody, if you already own a home, I've seen this with my clients a lot. Um, and you know, death comes, unfortunately things happen. People transition. Please, please, please have a will in place. I'm seeing real estate tear families apart. So I'm begging you all, if you already own a home, um, have a will in place. Have something in place where if it's you and your spouse, what happens if, you know, one of you pass away? Who gets it then? That's what's going on. Um, and I see it so many. I have a couple of clients that I've had go through this. So please, 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 if I can not give you anything else, have a will in place for your home and any other major assets that you may have. Um, cause that's major. Cause that goes into the inheritance piece. Because if you work hard and you're trying to set all this up for the generations to come, if you don't have that will in place and give specifications, it'll tear up the family more than it is a blessing. So please do have a will. Talk to a real estate attorney. Um, if you need some contact on that, please feel free to reach out and I'll give you those as well. That is amazing. Thank you for that real estate tip as well. So a lot of the real estate tips that we've gained today are very powerful, very poignant. Uh, 30% credit card usage. Keep it under that. Uh, We want to make sure that we go to annualcreditreport.com. Make Mm -hmm. sure we are pulling our our report and not our credit because that counts against us. It's a hard pull. Another real Mm -hmm. estate tip is to have a will in place. Another real estate tip is to go to real estate school. Go to real estate school if this is something that you're looking for um, to increase your your financial portfolio, um, actually to invest as opposed. And, and, and one of the real estate tips we also listen to that you are paying somebody's mortgage if you're renting anyway. So you might as you're well paying somebody to pay your own. So <laughs> yes, up your credit. Let's get right. Let's get our 40 acres in a, at a mule. Let's go. Let's yes. go We're going to get it. Thank yes. you. So I really appreciate you for having me. Audience that have joined, and thank you for those who have shared. Thank you for those who have commented. I really appreciate that. Uh, You have been on with the chat with TK, and I thank everyone for joining into this particular broadcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tiffany, once again for sharing your insight, sharing your spirit with us. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, she's going to go back, she's going to put this all in the comments. And she's going to let us know how to get in touch with her. But this has been a great uh, session on real estate. And I hope that you can come back uh, again with us and um, testimonies about these real estate options and, and how yeah, you I would love it. Thank you so much. And with that being said, next up, Sunday Best. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless. Bye.